What is this? What is this? And he's got an apple. So today on Garden Fork, we're going to talk about Japanese beetles. Um, Japanese beetles, uh, they're kind of a uh, the scourge. Is that the right word? They're a real problem around here. They are a non-native species that was brought to the United States in the 1920s that was first spotted in New Jersey of all places, according to Wikipedia. But in our yard, they, um, they tear apart uh, all the raspberries, they eat them all up, they eat the basil, they eat all the grape leaves, and they, they don't eat the veins of the leaves, they just eat all the leafy part around it, so it looks like this spider webby thing. Skeleton. It looks like skeleton. a skeleton, skeletonized leaves. And that's a sure sign. You can also just see them. I mean, they're these green, shiny bugs. So today I thought I'd show you, excuse me, um, a couple ways that I uh, get rid of them. Are you friendly about it? Gardening is a brutal, brutal hobby. I've got to tell you. Um, you have to kill things, basically. Um, Japanese beetles start as uh, eggs are laid in the grass and they start out as a white grub. You might be digging through your yard one day and you come across these like curled white grub looking things. They're more than likely Japanese beetles or some other kind of grub. Around here they're Japanese beetles. Could they be good grubs? Um, no, because what grubs do is they eat the roots of your grass. So, um, it's not a huge problem here, it's a bigger problem that they eat our plants. To combat the grubs in your lawn, and it's a good long-term way to try and get rid of Japanese beetles in your area, is to, there's a product called Milky Spore that you can dust around your yard, and it's an organism that um, parasitizes the white grub, the Japanese beetle grub, and it slowly spreads through your yard. Um, the trick is, if you live in a suburban area, you're going to have to get your neighbors to do it too, because the Japanese beetles from his yard are just going to fly over here and eat your stuff, even though you got them all out of your yard. Um, another way is you can use Japanese beetle traps, which I'm sure you've seen in gardening stores. Um, you know, it consists of a, a paper bag or a plastic bag with a, a, a pheromone trap, a lure, an attractant with a little um, yellow plastic thing and a cone. Isn't it's, that what you always tell me you have? Well, yeah, we have one. I kind of made Eric's version of it because otherwise you have to keep on. That's not what I meant. No, keep going. <laughs> oh, my own kind of lure, my own pheromone. <laughs> yes, I have a certain attractive scent <laughs> to women. And bugs. <laughs> and bugs. <laughs> a lot of what I do is I just I just go around to my plants and I I capture the Japanese beetles. And let me show you. I got to get my tools here. Hey! <laughs> Why does it uh, this is the filmmaker's leg. Okay, so we go back to the show. Come on, come on, get out of the way. Come on, bite over there. So you've got a plastic container. And then you put some water in it and you put some dish soap in there and you just swirl it around. It doesn't have to be super foamy. But now we're going to take this and we're going to just go around and knock Japanese beetles into our soapy water and they'll drown. While they play. Alright, so now I'm going to show you the uh, this in action. It's very exciting. Are you going to show us drowning? Now we're going to have drown. We're going to drown bugs. <laughs> So I just take this and I put it underneath the leaf they're in, and I whack them in like that. Whoa. And then they go in. Some of them fly off, some of them, you know, you're not going to get all of them all the time. You know, if this is the leaf, you kind of get your bucket underneath the leaf and then you just whack it. Thunk, or you can sweep them right in and they'll, some of them fly off, but... Do they um, bite? No, they don't. Japanese beetles, they fly really badly and when they hit a wall, they drop. Straight, they plunge down. Yeah, they, they just go thunk. So if you tap, and that's their <laughs> other defense is that they're on a leaf and the leaf if the leaf is disturbed, they usually curl up and drop and they fall. So they fall right into your little uh, foamy bucket of water here. There's some more over here. Oh, he flew off. What's your score there? Four? I got four. That's, you know, four, less. four that aren't breeding to have more of them. So.
I mean, you can you can spend days doing this. So, I'll show you a trap I made. Need a new obsession? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay, this is a Japanese beetle trap that I made. What I did was, um, I'm sure you've seen them in garden stores and people's yards. It looks like a, um, it just looks like a weather vane looking kind of piece of plastic and it has a scent attractant and then it has a plastic bag underneath it. And what I did was I, I learned about this from a family in Vermont who are actually jewelers. They make jewelry. So I took the, um, the kind of this four-way uh, weather vane thing from the original Japanese beetle trap I had. Mm -hmm. And because you know when Japanese beetles are attracted to something, they, they come here and they hit the wall and they drop. Remember that? They hit a wall and they drop. So you put up these little things. Drop and roll. Drop and roll. So then I put a little plastic funnel on here. I drilled a hole in the lid of this plastic bucket. I glued these with some plastic cement and then I put tape on it to hold it. <laughs> and then um, the funnel is just friction fit into the top lid here. And then what I did was I took the pheromone, the attractant, and stuck it on the inside of the lid. You can buy the attractant, you don't have to buy the whole trap. So then what I do with the bottom of the bucket is I fill it with soapy water again, and you just, you pop the lid on. <laughs> okay, back to the show. Show. Yeah, well, they are part of the show. Um, so anyway, can we just can I just show them this neat thing that I built? <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, the the pheromone is on the bottom. This is just a friction fit. You know, I just you could glue that if you wanted. And then in the bottom, I put soapy water. And Holy look, cow! Look at all the Japanese beetles. From how how long has it been? That's a day. That's a day. 24 hours? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go over there. Go on. Yes, that works. The instructions usually say that you put your trap like 50 foot upwind of where your garden is because this this pheromone trap will let you, you'll get all sorts of Japanese beetles. And there's a there's a debate as to whether using a pheromone trap like that attracts even more Japanese beetles to your yard. You know, who knows? So I think this works really well. It's really easy to make. Um, you know, you can put some wire on here. This sticks in pretty good for me. Does it have to be a certain depth, your bucket? No, no, you could have just an inch of water. This just is a, a bucket we had laying around. What happens so. if, uh, you know, what happens if uh, your dog drinks the water? It's just soapy water, it's, it's dishwater. It's it's the same, you know, you just- about to. <laughs> but you just snap the lid down tuck it away in the garden and it, it works day and night and all of a sudden you'll see you'll see them they go Kunk, and they just fall right in somebody stinks someone stinks okay so that's our show on Japanese beetles wait wait then do you have to uh, empty them out like or do you just leave them there oh that's a good question you should uh, empty it out once a day yeah because it will start to stink and the stink can overwhelm the pheromone attractant and you don't want to use a super fragrant dishwashing soap you know, oh, there was one that just went in. Um, oh, right here? Yeah. Wow. You know, you don't want to use a super fragrant dishwashing soap because that'll overwhelm the attractant. You can also use laundry soap does, if you want. Does it attract uh, other kinds of bugs, like good bugs? No, no, it's specifically for Japanese beetles. And the problem is in America is that the Japanese beetle has no known native um, predator. predator. Except uh, you, Eric. Yeah, except me. So that's our show on Japanese beetles. If you have any questions, send us an email or tell us what you think of the show. Tell us some show ideas, send us your videos, and tell your friends. All right? Send us your dog. Send, yeah, yeah. We have enough dogs. Yeah, don't send us your dog. Don't argue. Don't argue. Don't argue. All right. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. <coughs>